it's been a truly remarkable climb up the table. The match referee is Chris Campbell. His dad was a former top-line official as well, some of you may remember. Right, let us get across to our commentary team. Steve-O has joined the party alongside Barry McDermott, Terry O'Connor, and first of all, it's Rod Studd. Thanks, Eddie. Good afternoon. Yeah, what a difference 12 months has made to the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. When they rocked up in Newcastle last year, they were rock bottom, tailed off in Super League, and their chairman, Michael Carter, announced the appointment of Brian Smith as their new coach. Smith won just six times in 20 attempts and has departed after a defeat to the Catalan Dragons into this season, and Chris Chester has already got eight wins on the board in nine attempts. If he can make it nine out of ten, they'll go back to sixth in the table. If the Catalan Dragons can make it ten out of eleven on this recent rampaging run at the table, they will be at the Super League Summit pending Hull FC's match against Hull KR later on this afternoon. Will they get there, Terry? It's going to be a, a very big game for them, isn't it? And a, and a big ask and a turnaround in 12 months. What about the turnaround in, in nine weeks? And Chris Chester saying early on that the players are playing with smiles on their faces. They know that they've got to contain the big go forward. That's their task. The last time they failed to, um, to win a game was against Hull FC and they were dominated up front. They know that Catalan probably pose the same problems. Well, Hull FC, the only team in almost in living memory to have beaten either Wakefield or the Catalan Dragons. They've beaten both of them. We'll see them play hockey hour later, and in between times, Huddersfield Giants will take on St Helens. And here is Dave Taylor back from a, a ban after a tip tackle offence against uh, Batley in the Challenge Cup. And Thomas Bosk puts boot to ball, a high spiralling kick, and awkward to deal with, and it is well dealt with. And Bosk slipping into the spot vacated by the injured Richie Minor. And that's a good point, that because that role is pivotal not only to the team but particularly to Todd Carney. Todd Carney likes to drift in and out of a game and Richie Myler has been a really good supporting member of the team to allow him to do that. If the responsibility of guiding the team falls on the shoulders of Todd Carney, it might just suffer his game as he gives a penalty away at the play of the ball. And the first penalty bone by Chris Campbell and he is making his magic debut as a referee and a TV debut as a referee. He actually uh, was in charge of Wakefield's win over Warrington last weekend. Well, it's a great start for Wakefield, isn't it? Jacob Miller, the man who earns his side, a penalty, the urgency, goes short side, steps off his left foot, finds the floor, and just a second tug, bringing the man down. And it's all about speed for Wakefield. It might not be as big as Castellan, but I'm sure they can use that to their advantage. One of the uh, big advances Wakefield have had this year is that their two halfbacks have played every single match, Jacob Miller and Liam Finn, and that doesn't go amiss. Finn having signed on from the Castleford Tigers to move down the road to Wakefield, and it's uh, Nick Scruton taking the ball forward as Wakefield go inside Catalan Dragons territory for the first meaningful time uh, this afternoon. Anthony Tupo had his hands on the ball there. Catalan, who've scored plenty of points, they can go to the top of the uh, try scoring charts if they can put seven on this afternoon on uh, Wakefield. Here is uh, Miller once more. Miller spins it from left to right to Liam Finn. A long pass. It's a good pass, too. And it's been on that uh, far side by Joe Arundel. Arundel wrestled to the ground. Well, that's great vision, knowing that Dupont shot the line then. Prodded forward by Finn. Just a fraction too deep, but collected in the field of play and taken back in into in goal. So they'll have to play on. Well, Jody Broughton, Broughton, who scored a couple of tries on this ground last year, two brilliant tries for Huddersfield against the Catalan Dragons in that memorable draw. Well, first of all, he had to deal with catching the ball, then he had to get back in the field of play. So mission accomplished from Jody Broughton. Here's the man. I expect what Wakefield need to do is make sure that the outside defenders get up really quick. Dave Taylor, look, so powerful. He looks to offload the ball. The referee had called hell. That's why he'll go back to the play of the ball. Get up really quick, turn the ball, turn Dave Taylor back into the bigger forwards, and hopefully they'll contain him. Pelissier acting half back. They've got young Auric da Costa on the bench as the backup hooker with Paul Aiton, uh, the former Wakefield Wildcat. Out injured, been out injured long term since his move from the Leeds Rhinos as Carney whacks it away towards Ben Jones Bishop. Bishop takes his time trapping it left footed and picks up and starts moving away from his own trial line, crabbing across the field and in the end taken down by Broughton 20 metres away from the Wakefield line. Will make himself an easy target when he runs sideways, especially against some of the bigger outside backs for Catalan. Make sure you go direct, just give Jowett something to go on on the back of maybe Johnson as well. Both these teams have had plenty of points posted 
in the last few weeks. I think plenty of people expecting a lot of tries in this opening game. They've both been expansive, they've both given it a go. Danny Kerm on the Wakefield captain who signed a new contract with the club in the last few days ahead of this match. That's a big boost to Wakefield. It's a good ball to Scruton, and Scruton goes galloping away. Look at him go, the big man. Just runs into traffic, 20 metres out, didn't have any support, took the tackle. This is the last one in the set. Miller gets the ball in his hands and gives it straight back to Brooks, offside. who's blown for offside. Offside, what a wonderful break. Nick Scruton. He doesn't know what to do, he gets that far down the pitch. There's a lovely short pass to him, he plays the ball quick. None of the defenders in the Catalan shirts are onside. Jacob Miller, I think he knows that. Yeah, He's exactly. trying to find one of them to run into. I don't dream for one minute he passes to one on, on purpose. But great run, isn't look it? at the technique on the fella. You know, we saw a lot of that yesterday, some good pushing up really hard. Scruton does exactly that. Work for each other, work, help your teammate out. Well, he was looking for support, he was looking for oxygen as he approached the try line and in the end Wakefield have this fresh set of six tackles very very close to the Catalan line. Liam Finn once more. Very close as Dave Taylor had to come in with an important tackle for the Catalan Dragon. Scruton was going to go in at dummy half but Sio tries his luck and can't come up with the right numbers. Craig Hall tried to add a little bit of muscle to the argument, but five Catalan Dragons were there on their own try line. A couple of tackles left in this sequence for Wakefield. Jacob Miller shaped to kick earlier in the tackle count, but that didn't deceive the Dragons' defence enough for him to release a pass of any consequence. They wanted another penalty for an offence against Simon. It didn't come, and that may have been a fraction high. What was the view of Chris Campbell? Nothing, he says, and play on is the call as the ball comes loose to yeah. the uh, Catalan Dragons. Yeah, goes to offload the ball, knowing it's the last tackle, tries to use his footwork because the big fellow was getting off the line, trying to close the player down. You can just see steps inside, yeah, just a tug of the jersey, that's fine. Touch of a horse collar challenge from Dave Taylor, but no penalty blown. Pellissier, and now Pat Richards. Line speed so important when Catalan are bringing the ball away, so close to the line, make sure you condense your your defensive line, you get up really quick, you tackle in numbers, you peel off one by one, make sure your markers are set, ready for the next play. Yeah, Pat Richards, man of steel for Wigan. Amazing to think it was uh, six years ago when he was the 2010 man of steel with the Wigan Warriors, having gone back to uh, West Tigers and then back in France in uh, 2016 and nine tries and 50 goals to his name already the former Wigan warrior here's Ben Jones Bishop with number one on his back but playing on the wing with Max Jowett who really has been a wow at full back for the Wildcats Arundel the former Casford and Hull centre trundling up towards the halfway line there's some good players now for Wakefield and as I say, I think the big difference for them Rod is the way that they're playing together they haven't got some of the superstars at some of the top clubs, but the work ethic within the within the side and within the environment that Chris Chester created, that's what's getting them the wins. Just three wins all season in the 23 regular season rounds. And then they escaped in the million pound match against their Bradford Bulls from the middle eights. But to think they only got three wins in 23 is, uh, is staggering when you look at the league table now. And they already have seven in 14 games. So. Their output much bigger and better, and, well, who knows, they could have their best-ever Super League season. That's fifth in 2009. It's not beyond the bounds of possibility. Yeah, and a discipline, sorry, and a disciplined chase as well from the Wakefield side, making sure they stay on side, making sure that as soon as the winger catches the ball, Pat Richards, that then they hit him and take him to ground. Don't want to give a piggyback to this talented side from the south of France. He's dropped that. And the Dropped whistle that goes. Play the ball. Danny Gijo is judged to have spilled the ball it will be a Wakefield scrum and this is a great field position it's Justin Horrell who's trying to play the ball quickly I think he loses control of that that's the reason the scrum is being formed he's not happy with the decision but that was clear clear as day to me that just goes to show doesn't it you complete high as well you turn the ball over you make the team bring the ball away and in their urgency to play the ball, it's just a simple mistake trying to place it on the ground, play it as quick as they can. The focal point of the game is at the rook, and you've got to give your teammates that head start. On that occasion, just a simple error. Nine minutes in or thereabouts, and still looking for the first points of Magic Weekend Day 2 here at St James's Park in Newcastle. See you there at Dummy Half once more for the Wildcats. Mikael Simon. The, uh, the former Catalan Dragon had five seasons 
in the south of France. Now flying his trade in West Yorkshire. Two pooed as well to Finn. And Finn finds Arundel. Arundel off the loads. And Ben Jones Bishop is trying to tiptoe down the touchline. He does well in the end, really, to stay in the field of play because for all money, he looked like he was going to disappear into row A at one point. But he managed to stay in there. And a diving chance and a diving attempt for the Wildcats. No, no. No, no. That's a poor option, that rod. For Max Jowett, it was. Yeah. The young fullback. He thinks he has half a chance. He's probably got a quarter of a metre to go at. He shows it to the open side, and that's a really low percentage play. Well, Chris Chester, there you can see the Wakefield coach has done a fine job so far, but uh, I expected fully that the Catalans' pack would be too strong, even early in the game. But Chris Chester is obviously realising that, uh, that Wakefield can handle anything that the Catalan pack is going to throw at them today. Caught a glimpse of Laurent Fresinu, the Catalan Dragons coach. Two of the younger upcoming coaches, really. 39 year old Fresinu, Chris Chester, a couple of years younger. And well, both enjoying a really good season. Chester since his departure from Hulk KR and Fresnu. Lads were saying before the match, he's had some periods when he's been under a lot of pressure in the south of France, and sometimes when he was only a couple of games away from losing his job, they won't be thinking that at the moment, does Catalan get a penalty? No, well, Matty Ashurst just goes over the top of Jason Materi, not one of the biggest forwards in Super League, but one of the most aggressive, the way he brings the ball back, and this is just like gifting the opposition metres, good shot as Nick Scruton comes out the line looking to dominate Remy Casti, yeah, the Catalan captain was looking to get his right arm free and offload his Stewart, Glenn Stewart, the former Manly Seagull and South Sydney Rabito. Pelissier is in there at acting half back. Carney gets his hands on the ball. Tom Abosk looking to release Dave Taylor, and Taylor will take three men to drag him down. The trundling truck towards the Wakefield line, and the whistle goes for an offside against Wakefield. And that's a couple of penalties in this sequence of play for the French outfit. They need to be careful here now, Wakefield, and Max Jowett, decision to go, getting forced into touch, two penalties puts on the, under all kinds of pressure, too close to their own try line. Well, nothing particularly ambitious from tackle one from the Dragons, as Batieri sets it up with Pelissier once more, Carney, subtle ball, Gijo, Tony Gijo goes to within a couple of metres of the line, and it's uh, Jacob Miller with the important tackle, Oro now, and now Stewart, Stewart steps and then offloads once more to Casti, and Remy Casti is close once more to the try line. Tupo with the tackle, Pelissier has dropped the ball, but it will be another penalty, and that is the third in quick succession for the Catalan Dragons. Yeah, well, he can hunt out those penalties, Carney, Pelissier, the power from Dummy Harper, the foot. I think it's Tupu who makes, who kicks that ball forward. But just look at the amount of red shirt pushing up into that next hole. This could be real danger time for Wakefield here. You'd have thought so, because the mounting pressure and the mounting tackles on the line. Will the dam burst here for the Wildcats? Battieri and Pelissier scheming here. Casti goes from right to left. That's Gijo once more. He's swamped by Wakefield defenders. Ben Jones Bishop is the last man. Well, no, he says play the ball, the referee. It's not play on. He thought he wasn't held, Gijo. Referee thought otherwise. He plays the ball. Now it's Boss once more. Again, Castillo has seen a heck of a lot of the football in this sequence of tackles, this passage of play. Pelissier looking left, going left. Looks for Taylor. Taylor again with a little subtle pass. They'll get up to the line and over the line, but there's no way that they'll be getting that ball down. And he's held up, and there'll be a restart 10 metres out. It really is a siege here on the Wakefield line. Yeah, and well done to Liam Finn, the number seven, because he had Dave Taylor in front of his eye. He didn't commit on Dave Taylor, and then all of a sudden, he just pushes off onto Louis Anderson to help his teammate who was outside of him. Louis Anderson held up over the line. Bosk injecting pace. Carney, that was a little behind Oro. He had to wait for it to arrive, and that took the momentum out of his run. Glenn Stewart is in there. That's a loose pass, picked up by Bosk. Bosk with a one-handed offload. Gijo now going from right to left across the 20-metre line, collected by Taylor, who prods one forward into the in-goal area. Is it too strong? It is. It was well watched. Jowett waited, 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 and got the result of a 20-metre restart. Well, one answer we've got already is about Wakefield's character, the commitment to defence. They put themselves under pressure. They're looking to attack now. They're responding in the correct manner. Any championship side 
or championship winning side will make mistakes, but it's how you cover those mistakes up. Well done, Wakefield. Well, the three penalties they've conceded today now take the total conceded this year to 141 by Wakefield. That is the most of any Super League club, which isn't usually a recipe for success, but they're managing to, to ride it out. If they are giving away penalties, as Barry was just alluding to there, they're able to keep their line intact. Well, they can't keep doing that, can they? And they've got to make sure that when they've been under pressure that they complete the next set of six, they don't make a mistake like they just have. Because by not getting to the kick, you're not buying that extra 30 metres. You can see Hall here. Well, maybe there was an E, but you can see he doesn't have control of the ball. He doesn't have a, a grip of the ball when he's looking to place it down. And again, so from Matty Ashurst giving a penalty away in a similar position, they now make a mistake and they're under pressure. Yeah, silly error there, and uh, Wakefield looking pretty dominant as well, getting the ball near to the halfway line, but uh, you've got to re regain your feet before you try to play the ball. Hall failed to do that, and they've suffered the consequences. Yeah, Hall was one of the stars of the show in that big win over Warrington at Bellevue last weekend. Their magic record, though, not the best. Two wins and seven defeats. Wakefield, Catalan, four wins, four losses and a draw, but no defeats in their last four. The draw was last year against Huddersfield here when Huddersfield scored right on the buzzer and Danny Bruff converted from the sideline. Polissier and now Thomas Bosk. It's been all Catalan in the last three or four minutes off the back of three penalties and then the Craig Hall knock-on which gave Catalan some more decent field position. Todd Carney, he was one of the stars of that draw last year. Dave Taylor, Taylor got plenty of speed for a big man. Dupour to Pat Richards, who comes inside. The dancing feet of the former Man of Steel. Policier as the Dragons keep the ball alive. Good Carney, shot. clouted and clattered and taken down. Just about 12 metres short. It Rob was a good Jacob stop. Miller, Holly Morley. Casty again. Casty putting in plenty of work here. The Dragons captain, one of the originals from 2006, and now Todd Carney, and Carney has the step, and the one-handed scooped offload, Policier prods it into the in goal, that'll have to be tidied up by Ben Jones Bishop, can they pen him in? They cannot, as the former Leeds Rhino and Salford Red Devil gets free and gets into the field of play. Yeah, well, good work from Goodness Ben Jones. Dave That's Taylor right. has just performed a... Well, he just his strongest man, he was like towing a truck back into the in goal area. And Matt see if he was so many side. people, doesn't he? Is he offside or onside there, Stuart? Well, he looks square at Marker. He's come from Marker and taken him in, so I think he's all right. He's right in front of him. He's absolutely fine. He's just uh, slow to get rid of the ball. Well, he just towed a Rundle back into the in-goal And Joe Rundle's not small, Rod, as well. He is compared to Dave Taylor, though. Monstrous. Here we go, Jacob Miller on Todd Carney. Wow. That looked like your tackling technique then. He had his eyes shut then. <laughs> I knew what was coming, I was always on my backside after one of them. Well, it stopped the forward progress of Todd Carney to some tune, didn't it? The Wakefield delaying the dropout here, and Finn eventually, with you'd feel the petrol gauge running a little empty because they had to do a monstrous amount of tackling in the last five minutes. The goal line dropout, three penalties, a set that started off a handling error as well just about on the halfway line so this has been a really good passage for the Catalan Dragons and Rod we made that this point before the game Tez has talked about it the physicality of the Dragons the power the size they've took Dave Taylor off and put one of the most improved players Julian Bousquet on so more power more size that was Carney this is Horro. Horro is very close to the try line. He believes he's got the ball down for the first try of the afternoon. Justin Horro thinks he's got his third try of his Catalan Dragons career. The referee, Chris Campbell, wants to check the grounding. I think this is a try, Rod. Well, he's certainly in possession as we go over the line. And I think you can see the ball's down on the ground there. And this try will be awarded. That's the first video referee call in the career of Chris Campbell. I was just going to say that. Let's not too, let's not be too hard on him. It's the first time he's had a chance to do it. He's probably been practicing in front of the mirror for weeks, months, and years, and he gets a chance to do it. And he's got it. And there it is. I think it'll be a positive outcome. His decision on field. The video referee for the first game is James Child. Was a try awarded on the field, so. Well, they're just for some kind of conclusive evidence. And just having a little look here, Rod, if the ball actually 
because you can see the hand on the ball. Does the tip of the ball touch the grass? I believe it does. Yes, I do as well. Well, Justin uh, Oro believes he scored, and more importantly, so does James Child, and the Catalan Dragons take the lead. 17 and a half minutes it took them after a spell of pressure that in the end was too much for Wakefield to deal with. You can't continue to absorb pressure. They made it more difficult for themselves with the, the size and presence of Dave Taylor. He picked a rundle up, dragged him over the try line from that set of possession. Horro runs hard and strong. He should be dealt with. There's two defenders in front of him. You talked about it, the lack of energy at Rod. You can't continue to defend. It's harder to defend than it is to run with the ball. And the Catalan Dragons, after 18 minutes, get the first point. Oh, Pat Richards, already with 50 goals to his name for the Catalan Dragons. One of the most lethal goal kickers in modern day rugby league. And they've got some pretty decent backup in that regard as well with Bosk. If they need him, as Richards has hooked that off to the left, so the four does not become six. The Dragons lead, 4 nothing. Approaching the halfway point of the first half. Well, a typical example of running onto the ball, getting at full speed before you receive it, and that's the reason why he had the momentum to go over. That was good work by uh, Justin Horro. Looks like the big fella Taylor is uh, having treatment. Just have uh, tweaked it. He twisted the knee. It looked like his calves, although they're more like cows than calves, them, aren't they? He's a big boy. Let's go down to the sidelines, see if we can get an update on the uh, fitness of uh, Dave Taylor from Angela Powers. Angela, what have you got there? He's lying on the ground in front of me, having his calves massaged. It looks like a tight calf for him. Nothing too worrying. He will be on the pitch again later on in this game, but after his heroics earlier on, I'm sure they'll need him back. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, they'll want him back, that's for sure. As we mentioned, he didn't play last week against the Huddersfield Giants. Thierry and uh, Taylor were both suspended after incidents in the Cup game against uh, the Batley Bulldogs, which they won to progress to the quarterfinals where they'll play Hull, and they'll be eyeing up another final appearance in the Cup final is Ben Jones Bishop oh, skates right. away. You've got to be confident to throw that ball, haven't you? Haven't when, you just? When Jowett catches that in the, the bottom left-hand corner of the pitch, He's confronted with four Catalan players, and he thinks, no, no, I can see a teammate in good field position, he's going to have it. I thought I thought I heard him shout, <laughs> have it, when he threw it. Well, I'm not so sure about a good field position right underneath the sticks, but uh, they got away with it, Wakefield. They've just got to calm things down a little bit. They're, they're getting a little bit untidy, especially in defence. Few errors, few penalties given away. Get back to basics. Here's uh, Tupu, Anthony Tupu. They're missing a couple of their forwards through suspension. Scott Moore band and England band. The ball dribbling its way towards the 10 metre line of the Dragons. It's picked up by Jody Broughton, their leading try scorer. He has 13 in the Super League. Now, five adrift of the man at the top of the par, which is Denny Solomona, who's threatening to turn the uh, top try scorer race into a procession. Rod, I want to see more from Anthony Tupu. I, I remember him when he was playing in the NRL. He was a devastating runner, quality defender, and had some unbelievable skills as an offloader. I don't think we've seen enough of what quality he's got to offer. You'd like to think as he gets fitter and he gets more into the season, we'd see more of it, but there's certainly a lot more to come from him. Yes. The veterans, second row. Oh, that really is uh, one that the referee is going to have to intervene on there. It was high. It was a horse collar right round the neck of Elwa Pellissier from Danny Kermon, the Wakefield captain. Yeah, well, they can't complain about that, can he, Danny Kermon? Pellissier looking to get at maybe Liam Finn. Doesn't spot the Wakefield captain coming across with that swinging right arm. Well, Chris Chester, the Wakefield coach, has got to get the message out and say, look, we've got to get right down to basics, do what we've been done on the training paddock. And swinging the arm like that from the captain certainly doesn't help and uh, Chris Chester makes a positive note about a negativity looking at the completion rate here, Catalan completing 92 percent and you've got Wakefield at 56 percent the three teams that won yesterday all had the higher completion rates 
I believe that Wakefield, if they've got any chance of competing with Catalan, they need to be up there around 75-80%. Thanks, Stato. Uh, 20 metres out there, middle of the field for the Catalan Dragons, off the back of their fourth penalty of the afternoon, and we've only played 22 minutes of this game. The first three led to a sustained spell of pressure, which the Dragons scored through Horro. That's the only points on the board. Will it be more points on the board off the back of this penalty as Glenn Stewart spins it away? Broughton! Jody Broughton gets his 14th try of the Super League season, and what a profitable move it has been to the south of France for Jody Broughton. That's 104 tries in Super League and 161 appearances. That's some output, and it's 8 0 to the Dragons. Oh, wasn't that tremendous play? Good shape on the right edge for that man, Jody Broughton, to score the try. But you just can have a little look at the players in support. It all comes around yet again from Wakefield, giving away that penalty, which invites Catalan close to the line. You can see the ball out the back, the little turn up play, the nice little hands from Gigo to Jordy Broughton. And because the, they were trying to close down Gigo, you can see that it's Tom Johnson who goes in, tries to cut that play down. He's caught in no man's land, and the space is there for that man to score the try. A lovely, soft, fast hands, all accurate, all on the money, and that's the reason Jordy Broughton has the time and space on the edge. And there's some devastatingly fast players. Then Jones Bishop, Jordy Broughton, Johnson, Jowett. You'd back Hall in a race, but he's got his work cut out today. There's some, some devastating players. The simplest of scores for Jody Broughton, once Stewart and Gijo had fashioned the gaping hole on the left flank of the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats and Pat Richards who hooked his last attempt looking to readjust and take the Dragons into double figures if they do avoid defeat in this match they'll move to the top of the table ahead of the Warrington Wolves Hull FC could have a say in the argument of who finishes top their points difference was 34 worse than the Catalan Dragons at the start of play so they'd really need to take Hull KR to the cleaners well, he hooked the first one and he sliced the second. 8-0 to the Catalan Dragons. Well, this is a move that uh, would have been practiced time and time again on the training paddock. You see how Stewart brings in the full back. You talk about the soft hands. Beautiful play. Boy, that is fully deserved. Lonan Frissinu, the French coach, will be so happy in regards to that because that was a planned move. Stewart has added an extra dimension to the Catalan Dragons pack, the years of experience both with the ball and without it in there, the subtlety of the pass, setting up the opportunity, a great try, and here they go again now, they're well on top, it's Baitieri, Baitieri canters away for the Dragons, a raking run, and now they're setting up field position deep inside Wakefield territory, it's a quick play, the ball again here, and now they really are looking dangerous, Anderson, Louis Anderson takes them down the left flank. Wakefield have stemmed the tide for the moment, but for how long? Because the Dragons are rampant here. Two tries already from Oro and Broughton. And a third really would put them in a dominant position as the clock ticks round towards 25 minutes. The pace of the attack has dropped. Carney trying to increase the tempo once more. Oro looking to get his second try, the last tackle in this sequence then. Glenn Stewart comes in at dummy half this time. Bosk just tickles it forward with the superb weight and a diving challenge by Tony Zizio, and he believes he may well have scored. Wakeford might have clocked off early thinking, thinking it was going to go dead, but Zizio was in the wide awake club and says, I'm having four. Video rep decision, though. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is a try. The Wakeford play is trying to blow the ball over the dead ball line, Stuart. Well, <laughs> they certainly were waiting. Tony Gigo wasn't waiting around. Does he get it onto the ground? Oh, oh. Well be just a little bit of separation there, because I think it touches his hands first before it, before it, uh, he gets a second touch to it. It looks ugly, doesn't it? The, oh, does it come off his knee? The control doesn't look the best. But they're always difficult when the ball bounces up off the floor. If it's on the ground, it's quite easy for the players. It's difficult to see. Does he just come off his knee before his hand goes back on it? This should give us uh, some information. Is, if his hands touch it first... I think his left hand touches uh, it, I doesn't think, it, Stuart? I think he comes off his knee into his left hand, the separation, and then it goes back to his 
uh, he grounds it then. So I think this will be a no try. I think this is a knock on. It's a try. And it's 12 0 to the Catalan Dragons. And Tony Zizio gets his sixth of the season and follows Zorro and Jody Broughton over the try line. Well, it's easy to look at lots of passages of this try. The setup and the break from Bateri, the composure he shows, he doesn't offload it. He banks the advantage from that position. Glenn Stewart, the quality of that pass, gives the time and think time to Thomas Bosch, who's allowed to put the ball into the space where he wants it. That's a second rower passing the ball to the standoff right on the money. And it's the skills and the accuracy of those skills and the composure under the stress of the game that's edging the Dragons out in front. And uh, no problem this time for Pat Richards from bang in front. He likes them there. It's 14-0. Chris Campbell, the referee on the field, had given the try. James Child clearly saw no evidence to overturn the decision. Well, that's a big lesson to anybody watching, especially youngsters who never, ever just leave the ball anywhere in the in-goal area. If you're going to get near it, get the boot to it, get your hand to it, but to allow the full-back to beat them to it, that, uh, well, will not please well, the Wakefield coach, Chris Chester. The modern-day mantra of avoid repeat sets at all costs, though, steve -O, and you know, go back a few years, they'd have punted out in the stand and defended the dropout. Absolutely, yeah. you're in a, such a difficult place. You don't want to defend again as a team that's had to do it, the majority of the defending in this match. The and mindset of the Wakefield players was, well, let's just see if it goes off. Hindsight's a, a very, very good thing. And you want help from your teammates around you. If they see that there's a man who's putting pressure on, he's come, his run's been from outside to in, Tony Gigo. Listen, if you've got your back to the opposition that's put the kick through, you hit that ball, knock it back, or kick it all the way down to Middlesbrough. It's in the opposite direction, I think, Steve. Gates said would be that way, actually. Eight, eight minutes, three tries for the Catalan Dragons. Justin Oro, Jody Broughton, and Tony Zizio. And now uh, a swinging arm is blown against Glenn Stewart, and Wakefield get the relief of a penalty 10 metres from their own line. Boy, they'll be grateful to hear that whistle. Yeah, they need this as well, because the opening 10 minutes, it was all about Wakefield. All the runner players seem to be up near Catalan's line and Stewart, well, the footwork at the line from the youngster, Jowett, just goes over the top and they do need that penalty. They do need more of the ball, whether it's a couple more repeat sets, the forwards are starting to, to look tired. Well, they did say that, uh, <laughs> that Len Stewart brought a, a new dimension to the Catalans, but I don't think that was in the scrapbook. No. Nope. Nope. Well, 14-0 was the lead at this stage of the match that Warrington Wolves had over Castleford Tigers yesterday afternoon. And Warrington did not trouble the scorers after, and Castleford ran riot. Is there a similar fairy story fight back from the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats? They've got to get one foot on the ladder first because the last 10, 12 minutes have been totally dominated by the would-be league leaders. And now they've got the ball back as well, and they've found that... Man mounting centre, Vincent Dupont on the far side. He does take some dragging down, and the whistle goes because there's a player down in back play on the halfway line. That uh, Chris Campbell is quite rightly saying, "Let's have a look here." It's Liam, Liam Finn. Finn, yeah, Liam Finn down. It'll be a big blow if there's a problem with Liam Finn. He's had a lot of defending to do, Liam Finn. They're really targeting him. They're sending big men at him, giving him a difficult afternoon. Liam Finn, thankfully, the Irish. Captain, former Irish captain, is up and looks like he's able to take his place in the defensive line. And 14 0 at the beginning of the year, Rod. I would say Wakefield haven't got a chance of winning this. But because of the way the form has been over the last nine games, they're still in with a shout. Well, they were beaten 42 28 by the Dragons at Bellevue. That was Brian Smith's last game in charge in March. And they staged something of a fight back in that game. And got themselves back within arm's length, couldn't quite go on with it. And uh, here's some more news for the Wakefield Wildcats. Willie Mason has just entered the fray for the Catalan Dragons, a 36-year-old veteran Australia forward. And this will be exactly the situation he likes against a tiring defence close to half-time. But this time the Dragons have coughed up the ball. Well, there was times I was looking at the, the Catalan players early on in the game because they've been under pressure. No matter how experienced, no matter how good, no matter how big they were, they looked like they were really tired. 
because they were defending so close to their own line. Yet all of a sudden they've got so much energy because they're defending near Wakefield's line. And it's always harder when you're, you've got to come up with those answers and you've got to make sure that you're cutting down the likes of Liam Finn, Jacob Miller, because they're the ones who are running on you. They're the ones putting doubt in your mind. Just inside their own half, Wakefield haven't seen what the Catalan Dragons half looks like for some time. They really have been on the back foot ever since Oro gave. The Catalans are lead just shy of the halfway point in this first half. They creep over the halfway line. Sio, dummy half. The fit again Finn has his hands on the football. Kermont tried to bump up a defender, couldn't get free. And really, all the tackling has probably taken its toll here for Wakefield. When well, he said play it, they'll have to go back and play the ball there. It will be Simon who'll play the ball. He'll play it 30 metres out here for the Wildcats on the final tackle. It goes towards Miller. Well, I'm not quite sure this is in the script. This batted on towards Tom Johnston. Johnston prods his left boot towards the ball. And it's a good kick in the end. And in the end, for Wakefield, the set. Well, I was going to say the set finishes well for Wakefield, but in the end, it finishes on a penalty to the Catalan Dragons, it was all off the cuff, it was all not in the playbook yeah. in the end. It ended with a good kick, Terry, but then they've given away the penalty of the back. It was it. messy though, Rod, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. You'd like to think that the half-backs, that man Jacob Miller or Liam Finn takes control. Johnson, yeah, it's a good kick. It's a good chase as well from Holt. Yeah, it was messy with a Y at the end, yeah, Terry, the it rather than rather than messy with an I at the end. And a swinging arm from Jacob Miller as well, so you get them trapped near, the, near their own line, you give a penalty away. Well, let me just tell you about the two half-backs. There's Jacob Miller, he's involved in that fracas. Liam Finn, they were both on the opening, open side, screaming for the ball. Todd Carnett and, and Jacob, Jacob Miller, Miller got the ball, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. But he was want, he wanted it in a better position, and he wanted it first time. Listen, both of you, first off, we don't need you coming and swinging over the top like that. You caught him high. Yeah, that's a penalty, so yeah. you don't need any of that. Right, but for you, no, no, listen, no, no. Leave, I don't need your help. Leave it to me, yeah. and I'll sort it. I've got a penalty. That, that's your first and your last warning we're running in. Don't start anything. All right, take it back. Your penalty. All right, calm down. Calm down. Well, well done, Chris Campbell. Do you know, his dad always had a good rapport with players, and that's certainly what he's got and building up. And you see Todd Carney when he comes in. Did he deal with that well, Stuart? He dealt with it very well. It's a, it's a situation that's been simmering from early on in the game between uh, between the two half-backs, between Carney and uh, Miller. They were talking at the, the first scrum of the game and it's been continuing all the way through. Yeah, good. And he's not going to stand any nonsense out there. And it's his first television game, as we mentioned. First Magic Weekend game. And the, the penalty off the uh, back of the kick into touch. The Dragons start rumbling forward once more. Eight minutes to go before half time. 14 0. It's Huddersfield Saints next, and then the whole derby. Oh, and Van Sant Depor took his eye off the football. Free play here to Ben Jones Bishop. And Ben Jones Bishop has got plenty of toe, and he's got enough time to go to the try line for an opportunist try. BJB with the TRY for Wakefield, and they're back on the board and back in the game. Well, I told you, Rob, I told you, and I bet the people sat at home when I mentioned the Formula One race cars in this game, and I mentioned Ben Jones Bishop, I bet there were more than one or two of you frowned and lifted your eyebrows. Ben Jones Bishop has an incredible style. He's faster than he looks. He has such a wide gait. All he needs is half a chance. You watch him on step five there. The technique and speed means he's in for the try and leaves everybody else for dead. But you just got to take your chances, haven't you? The mistake from Vince Dupont, the big foul for man. There's only five Catalan players that have made more appearances than him. So he's got all the experience, but even experienced players come up with mistakes and so close to half line. This is exactly what Ben Jones Bishop and his teammates need to give him that lift in the final seven minutes. How close was it to the sideline as well? Fantastic wow. finish. A galloping racehorse of a player, Ben Jones Bishop, as you said, Barry, is so deceptive, that gliding style. A wide gate. Do you know what a wide gate is, I, Rob? I do, it's uh, what's used to keep cows in the field. <laughs> Liam Finn to reduce the arrears even more. Well, 14-0, and the Dragons totally dominant and absolutely bossing this match. Suddenly now, off that opportunist try by Ben Jones-Bishop and Liam Finch's conversion, 
just an eight-point game. It's amazing how the error can just change a match around. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it's the heels just up as, uh, as he runs through. So, good call by Clint Sharrod, who's right behind him there, in a good position. Very close call. He's very confident not to put that on the video referee. Yeah, there's only a millimetre in that, but uh, it has lifted the Wakefield spirits. They needed something. They were becoming their own worst enemy, giving away silly penalties and uh, errors. Well, it was 14-0 to Warrington against Castleford yesterday, and in the 34th minute, Castleford scored to make it 14-6. In the 34th minute, Wakefield have just scored to make it 14-6. Positively bizarre. A good couple of carries there, Rod. Scott Anderson, first of all, then Kermon, then I think it's Simon. Well, buoyed by that try, they get it wide to Johnston, the flying machine. Johnston is out of one tackle, gets the ball away, ball comes loose again. Is that play on or was it a knock-on? Referee happy to continue, and Carney has somehow shuttled it dead, going back to the knock-on. Just wanted to see what occurred, but this boy Johnston, who really announced himself onto the scene last year with a try and a losing cause for Wakefield against Castleford. It's an absolute wow on the wing. Well, there's a little message, isn't it? For some of the French players that, look, we're not going to sit back and let you intimidate us and run all your fancy plays. We're going to take the game to you. They took their foot off the pedal, didn't they? They got to a 14-0 lead with uh, the French outfit. And I'm afraid uh, their defence, they're just taking a rest. You, you cannot afford to look at the clock and say, well, you know, we're going at half-time with a 14-0 lead. And they have taken the foot off it, the pedal. Johnston, 23 Rooney. tries in 28 games for Wakeford, 11 in the last seven. Michael Carter has made it quite clear that he's not for sale, but one wonders when the big clubs come looking what will happen. Now they've lost the scrum. Or against the end. Lost their own scrum feed. It's a collector's item. Oh. Well, last statistician Ian Proctor for the last time that happened, I think it might have been about 1978. Steve-O was hooking, I think, at the time. But Wakefield have got a ball against the head on the break, and that really is a major, major boost in the shadows of half-time. They've already just scored once. Can they nick another here to get back within a couple at the break? That would be remarkable. As Simon goes within eight metres of the line, scrambles for another metre. Liam Finn. Finn shows the ball and all oh, was the obstruction? Was there some obstruction there? Yeah, I no. thought the same. Was he tackled before he got hold of the ball? That's what they were appealing for, wasn't it, Barry? But well, Pushing up into next hole there, well, was it taken? Well, oh, yeah, it was. I think it was. Glenn Stewart. There might have been a forward pass involved as that, and that's maybe the reason why the official, Chris Campbell, has said play on. Just a touch forward, perhaps. Well, there was certainly a hand on him before he, he got the ball, so probably a penalty would have been the right call in that case. That wasn't the view of Chris Campbell. Not quite sure what angle he had on it or what his view of it was, but it certainly didn't see it that way, and the Catalan Dragons have probably got away with one there. And boy, if Wakeford had scored again then and made it 14-12 just before the break, what a turnaround that would have been in the last few minutes of the first half. That's a neat kick right to the corner. That's going to force Wakefield in the form of Max Jarrett all the way back to his own try line. he just make it outside the 10, but that was a good kick by Carney to pin them back off the back of some pressure on his own line. Well, they were on the front foot, weren't they? Every player putting their hands up, they were all asking questions, they were all pushing hard, and then you've got Catalan here now themselves. Know that they're in a battle know that they've got to contain Wakefield, they don't want to give them any of those cheap yards, but unnecessary penalties here, I feel. Two minutes to the break. Oro, Broughton and Gijo for the Dragons, they led 14-0, Ben Jones-Bishop with the opportunist try, which has got it back to 14-6. Wakefield with new life here as Scott Anderson takes it forward. 30 metres out for Wakefield. What have uh, Finn and Miller got in their locker here on this set? What are they going to 
conjure up. One drifting to the left, which is Miller, the other one drifting to the right, which is Finn, but they keep it in the forwards for now with Mikael Simon. He looks to offload out the back door. It reaches Finn. Now it's Miller. Miller spins it to this uh, near side for Ashurst. And further wide to Tupu. Billy Tupu hurls a pass wildly away, offloading without due care and attention. And it goes into touch, and it will be a Catalan's ball, and that might be enough just about to run it out to half time. Yeah, well, it's the tackle that comes across from Horo. He feels that if he doesn't offload the ball back into the field, he's going to get pushed over to the touch from not only Horo, but Broughton as well, who's going to be adding some weight. Maybe when he was going out wide, Tupu, he was looking for Johnson to cut back inside. If Johnson cuts back inside, it frees up that play, maybe gets him a one-on-one -on -one and creates the space on the inside rather than the outside. Here's another, is this a mistake here? Wakefield heading ball, so they've pushed Catalan off the ball, and now they've forced them to make a mistake. So when you go into a scrum, and when you're playing against Wakefield, you've got to expect the unexpected. There you go. <laughs> well, I think Wakefield needs to pack a scrum before they can actually push somebody off it, but they've got away with it. Yeah. Come on, Stuart, you killjoy. You never see that in rugby league, let them have it. Close to the line, you've just, what, less than a minute to go? Well, apologies if you heard any inappropriate language in the scrum, which was picked up on the referee's mic. Wakefield have the scrum now. And uh, Miller had his hands on the ball once more. A chance they maybe didn't think they were about to get. That's twice they've turned things over on the scrum. And Catalan Dragons coach Laurent Fresenu will not be happy with that. He'll be even less happy if it costs them more points. Liam Finn showing it and then moving forward. Half a chance here is Miller. Can they get it wide to Johnston? They do eventually on the hop. Johnston, it's a new set of six that hardly matters. Johnston offloads. Oh, oh. Well, that's wild from Matty Ashurst. They will play the knock-on. Is there time to pack the scrum? I doubt it. Well, they're running to pack it. Yeah, they might just get there and they have. Oh, one more play, Rod. One more play. One more play. Some Usain Bolt-like sprinting to the scrum from the Wildcats, and they've just stopped the clock with three seconds left to play. They will get one play close to the line. Well, worryingly for Wakefield, Tom Johnson, he's down on one knee, receiving attention. The doctor is now on, on the way. Physio and doctor not happy with something. What's the what's the play here from this well, scrum? Right? Yeah, well, is it kick, yeah. high kick in well, the air? Will it be the Catalan Dragons' old signature play that we saw at Langtree Park, which went on for about 10 minutes as they moved the ball around with 72 offloads? And, and uh, do you try and keep it alive? <laughs> do you kick it for the right. corner? Do you try and isolate one blow with a high kick? Johnston back on his feet, but being helped towards the sideline, and that is not good news for the Wildcats. Their gun winger has gone off now whether that's going to be permanent or whether he's going to be okay with a 15 minute half time break to get him back and patched up we'll have to wait and see but he heads for the sidelines one play then for the wildcats right on the bell here miller opts for the kick and that should be easy to deal with and it's just hacked away by tony gijo who says thank you very much we're going for half time and gijo one of the try scorers for the catalans along with Justin Oro and Jody Broughton. The Ben Jones Bishop tries breathe life into the Wildcats, and at half time they trail. Catalan Dragons lead 14 points to six. Yes, the top of the table is beckoning for the men from Perpignan. 14 6 at half time. It was all going really according to plan, courtesy of the Horro. point of this first game something's got to give for these two teams they left Newcastle without tasting victory last year Dragons held to a draw Wakefield hammered for a third consecutive year by Castleford different kettle of fish here today though all to play for second half back to Steve-O Barry Terry and Rod Studd thanks Eddie yeah how important was that try from Ben Jones Bishop opportunist effort after Vincent Dupont spilled the ball 14-0 just thought the Dragons were absolutely cruising. One of the legendary Pat Richards kickoffs, and well, it's palm dead. Now then, was his foot in touch? Was it in touch? I think he in had which his... case it's a penalty, or did he knock it dead? In which case it's going to be a dropout. Sorry, Rod. I think he had his foot out of play, and he only has to touch the ball. If that's what's happened, then that's 
amazing awareness and skill. Well, it's a good job by he such a young man, Max Jowett. That's it. His foot's out of play when he touches the ball, so he results in a penalty on the centre of the halfway line. Well done, young man. Well, that is an absolutely whopping difference, isn't it? From a goal line dropout to starting a set 30 metres out, the other end of the pitch. And they started the first half well, and they ended the first half well as well, didn't they, Rob? They did. They did. Let's see what they can produce here. Mikael Simon carting the ball into heavy traffic. Glenn Stewart was looking to lend some weight to the tackle, but thought better of it and moved away and back into the defensive line. Anderson, the Australian, rumbles forward. Wakeford looking to cut the lead from eight to just four and maybe even to two. Arona to Miller. Miller from right to left. Now they bring the fullback Jarrett, who started all this with that piece of skill inside his own uh, dead ball area. Loose pass dived on by CO. For a moment, it looks as though the Dragons were ready to pounce, but Wakefield keep the ball in hand. But this is the last tackle. It could be another messy end to the set. Here's the kick from Miller, testing Pat Richards. Comes free from Richards. Who knocked that down? Who knocked that down? It's going to be a 20 metre restart. Pat Richards was convinced that was the case, and he was right. There could be a good contest in the other. Pat Richards and Ben Jones Bishop, two tall wingers. The ball goes in the air. It's always easier for the man who's running onto the ball than the man who's planted underneath. But yeah, the ball comes off Ben Jones Bishop, so the correct call. Well, over the years, there's a mistake. Oh, slip oh, penalty. Oh, penalty blown. Again, another important decision which makes a huge amount of difference. But Chris Campbell is absolutely convinced. It was dragged free. Jacob Miller, you can just see him there. They've had a torrid half. Jacob Miller and Liam Finn. I was looking, according to our stats, they've both done over 12 tackles, which is a heck of a lot for pivots. And that's going to take some time and some juice out of the tank. They need to refocus, get back into the game, and do what they do best for the team. Well, the other big stat is the Wakefield completion rates, which Terry will bring you in a minute. It's an absolute horror story. And that's a forward pass. The completion rates are just awful for Wakefield in the first half, Terry. What, they're 50, 50, 52%, 52%, 52%, and for Catalan it was 81%, and, and this is what Wakefield need. They need the, the bigger side, the more glamorous side, to be making those mistakes. Need to be making them nearer their own try line as well, and Thomas Bosk, well, he's in for the injured Richie Myler, along with Todd Carney. They've got some talented players, but again, we spoke about it in the first half, the work ethic, the energy that which Wakefield have played over recent weeks, that could get them the win. Let's go down to the sideline and get the half-time chat from the changing rooms from Angela Powers. Yeah, for Chris Chester, it's all about set completion. Wasn't happy at all with just 56%, he says, set completion. They went away from their structures after the first 10 minutes, and if they get back to them, they reckon they can get something out of this game. Tom Johnston passed his con concussion test, so he will be available to play in the second half. For the Catalan Dragons, Lauren Fraser News says it's all about discipline in defence for them. They did take charge for 25 minutes, but then let Wakefield back into the game. He wants them to ask questions as well and be ruthless in attack. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, we just saw a very pensive Laurent Fresnier there. As his side look to go to the Super League Summit if they can avoid defeat against Wakefield. Liam Finn. Finn moves forward, but wasn't going anywhere. Not once he'd been greeted by a welcoming committee of Catalan Dragons. That has gone above the height of the stand. It's an absolute monstrous bomb. Wakefield come back with it. Miller spins it out wide to this right-hand side. Have they got someone over here? They've got Ben Jones Bishop. Can they use it? Ben Jones Bishop! With an acrobatic attempted try. I think he's got that down. Ben Jones Bishop looking for his second in the afternoon. A spectacular score if it is awarded. Yeah, I agree, Rod. As soon as that ball goes in the air, it's a contest. I think it was Kerman who comes down with it. And the man who scores the try in the first half of Wakefield has he opened the score in the second half. For the Wildcats. Well, he wants to check touch. Does he put his foot in touch before he gets the ball down? Certainly okay so far. I think he stays up in the air, oh. and that's fine. Great that's finish. Great finish. And Ben Jones Bishop with the tightrope at the circus at score. And certainly no clowning around from the Wakefield winger, his second of the afternoon and his sixth of the season. And, well, he needed all of his six-foot-two-inches frame with the arm outstretched to get it down, but 
the art of the spectacular score is becoming almost commonplace. It's, it's ludicrous, really. It is a very, very special talent, but we see it so often now. Yeah, in I, Super League. I agree, but it's, it's game on as well now, isn't it? To score, to, to come up with that, so close to the trial. I'm sorry his effort in the first half was incredible. And now this is a pressure kick from Liam Finn from right on the sideline here. Remember, they were 14 zip behind in this match, and now five minutes into the second half, they could be back within a brace. And that's going to creep in. And Wakefield are back within two. Finn converts both the tries. Pat Richards, remember, missed two from three. One from that pretty, well, two from a very similar spot there to where Finn has just nailed one. So just a couple of points in it now at 14-12. Well, that was a poor effort, wasn't it, by the Catalan players. They allowed the ball to be reefed back. What a great finish. Second try of the game for this fella. And it all came about by the error from the kickoff, remember? It was wonderful play by Max Jowett to defuse the kickoff with his foot over the deading goal line. And they have just sat back and allowed Wakefield to get back into this game. Did Joe Rundle do well? He timed that pass to perfection. He drew in Todd Carney as Wakefield. They earned themselves another penalty. The Minister of Defence, Glenn Stewart, gives a penalty away at the play of the ball. There's a tussle on the floor. They're right back in this game, Wakefield says. I, I agree with you. I'm oh, sorry if you heard some language that. We didn't want you to hear it off the referee's mic. Uh, here's Miller for the wait for Waco. So back here, we talked a lot about Catalan maybe going to the top of the table, but let's look what happens if Wakefield win. They go to 16 points, they go up to six, and Wakefield Trinity Wildcats would be four points off the top of the Super League. That's a side that only picked up a total of six in 23 matches last season. That's a remarkable, remarkable turnaround by Wakefield. It is, isn't it? And with the same players that started off the season that was put together and Brian Smith and then Chris Chester's come in, totally turned around the fortunes, the mistake. Here now from Wakefield, but Chris Chester is done a fabulous job to give them the belief that they can go out there and actually compete with the big boys. And the best ever season was fifth in 2009. They finished sixth also in 2004. Well, in the past, uh, when they've conceded 14-0, remember that the uh, the Catalans were leading. So often we've seen a Wakefield side just uh, drop their heads and allow the opposition to take control, but full credit to them. To fight back, only two points in arrears now. Remarkable. Halfway line here for the Catalan Dragons, who've, well, not only stalled, but have just gone completely into reverse since going 14-0 up, and that was on 26 minutes, so 21 scoreless minutes for Catalans, which have contained two Wakefield tries. Here is Todd Carney, Carney kicking into open space between the fullback and the winger, it's picked up on the try line by Max Jowett. Rod and the Catalan coach, Lauren Fresny, knows that he needs some decent goal forward. They've not had that in the last 20, 25 minutes. They've sent on Remy Casti and big Dave Taylor to try and get that authority again round the centre field. Casti making his 200th Super League appearance for the Catalans. Here's another penalty, and this second half has been littered with Wakefield penalties. The one obviously from the kickoff, a couple of others also. Well, Dave Taylor, he's just coming back from the suspension. Well, well that's a great point because he wasn't banned for an incident uh, in a home game against Salford. Then he was involved in two incidents against Batley, for which he was banned for one of them. And he comes back and he gets involved in another one. Are you asking why? Is that what you're asking? Well, or are you just making a statement? Well, if you keep getting arrested for speeding, you'd probably slow down when on, on the road, wouldn't you? I mean, or would you? Anyway, Busque is involved, and uh, Taylor has given away that penalty, and now he's on the back foot with the rest of the Catalan Dragons. Wakefield very much on the front foot here, looking for a go-ahead try here to take the lead for the first time in the match. Sio wanted a penalty, it wasn't forthcoming. Mikhail Simon plays the ball for the Wildcats. Liam Finn, Kermon, that bounced off a Catalan Dragons hand into the air, and it will be a knock-on off Pat Richards, yes, and it was called as such by referee and touch judge. Well, Pat Richards, he had to make that tackle, he had to make it good. 
and Danny Kerman, he's trying to do what Arundel did for Ben Jones Bishop in the last try. He takes one for his corner. But I've just been watching the sideline. Willie Mason, he looks to me, Rod, like he's come off the pitch and he's picked up a calf injury. We saw Dave Taylor in the first 20 minutes. He had to come off. Some of these Catalan players picking up knocks, bumps, bruises. Whether they can come back, that will alter the rotation of the side and that might give half an inch to Wakefield. And that's all they need. They're not out of this game. Well, that's uh, Willie Mason. Who cuts a rather dejected figure with an iced up calf. And he watches on as he watches Wakefield by Joe Rundle in a very central position here, just about 18 metres out from the Dragons' try line. It's a very different feel to this game now than it was at the back end of the first half. Tinarau Rona was involved there, now Liam Finn. Now the ball through the hands of Scott Anderson. Very close to that Wakefield line. Sio looking for options. Spins it to Finn, who had to stretch forward to collect it. Now Miller. Miller running away from traffic. Can't get away from Glenn Stewart. The all-enveloping Australian takes him down. Wakefield, though, with a couple of tackles left in this sequence. What have they got here? What's Jacob Miller got, the former Hull man? Well, this is a dancing run. And off to Kermond, and Captain Kermond is very close to the line himself. Picked up. Oh, must be a try. Must be a try here for Sio. It is a try, and Wakefield are in front here. Sio scores off a quick play of the ball, and Wakefield have turned their game around completely here. They were 14 0 down, three unanswered tries. They lead 16 14, kick to come. Well, Wakefield really stretching the defence of the Dragons, really asking questions. Ultimately, the decisions that the Dragons defenders make are making are wrong and costing them points. But credit to Jacob Miller, who's buzzing around like a bee, trying to get on the end of things. He picks up from dummy half, he knows that Bousquet, if he takes half a step towards him, could have eyes for him. Create the gap, create the space, and you just see Glenn Stewart desperately trying to get into that space. But Wakefield back in this game through CO. Well, I must admit, I thought I was being a little bit fanciful when I was drawing comparisons to the fact that Castleford were 14 nothing down to Warrington and romped back to win going away. When Wakeford were 14 nil down, they scored in exactly the same minute, the 34th as Castleford to get back to 14-6. That became 14-12. It's now become 14-18. What sort of thing is happening here, Steve-O? Well, their defence is just shot at the moment, but just shows you a quick play of the ball. And the hooker, Michael Seo, made full advantage of that. Chris Chester really has inspired this outfit. Because Jacob Miller's buzzing around, like Barry says, he's just getting more and more into the game, a bigger influence, and Bouske, when you're a big man, you... You're constantly looking at the smaller men because you don't want them to take you on. The footwork's all there for everyone to see. And when he runs at the bigger forwards, he's causing problems. Well, they've called upon the same magic as Castleford. And that make a mistake here, be, uh, Blown by Chris Campbell. They make a mistake going yeah, into contact, trying do. to get to the edge. It looked like an offload. That's what I thought. It looked like an offload. No, he loses first, the ball. But, but that's what I'm saying. It, it wasn't. It was the ball was lost. It was lost forward, and Tupu right late call, call back. And just to extend the point we were making about Finn and Miller having to do that so much defending, that's not so much an issue if Kermond and Matty Ashurst, who are effectively the bodyguards of those halfbacks, do some work and don't allow the big, powerful players that Catalan have got to keep running at them. Well, now they are running at them. This is their first attacking chance in 13 minutes for the Catalan Dragons. They've seen a lead not only disappear, but Wakefield now to go out front. That is a dangerous tackle. That's a penalty. A case of uh, the bite a bit on this occasion as Dave Taylor is the victim. Was it CO? Tackle. Yeah, sorry, Rod. It's CO who comes underneath Dave Taylor. Three men in control. But CO just upends him. And puts him into that dangerous position. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah. Hold the line. Go. Go. Play on. 
not sure. I'm not sure that any of them were onside. Anyway, play on. Let's get on with it. As Battieri takes it in for the Dragons. Pellissier is the man who's the architect of this attack. Looks to his left, fires left to Casti. Casti, one of the originals with Munis and Boss from 2006 as the Dragons celebrate their 10th anniversary in the Super League. Pellissier, another messy play the ball. A ball on the hop out to that far side to Oro who started the try scoring. A long time ago now, it was in the 18th minute that the Dragons took the uh, lead in this contest. Stewart not really running at full speed when he collected the ball, but now they're moving with some pace with Dupont, and Dupont is over the line and he scored. Vincent Dupont has wrestled his way over the trial line, muscled his way over the line for a levelling score at 18 all. Well, that's just sheer power, isn't it? Because if you look at the, the Wakefield defensive line, not one of the players was jumping the line. They were all going up, they were all communicating, they were, they were nominated, they were saying that who they were going to be getting. And then all of a sudden, they're on the back foot because of the run. But here's where it all comes about. Penalty, CO straight underneath the big man. But look, nominated, who's mine? Yep, push off. We won't get involved with any of the dummy runners. This just sheer power. Look at the run, keeps pumping his legs when he knows that Ben Jones Bishop is over the top. He wraps up the ball. The strength to spin out the tackle and ground the ball. That's a good play from the left centre. It's easy to underestimate again. I'm sorry if I keep mentioning Glenn Stewart, but it's the little things that he's adding to the game. Takes that ball forward, skips across, goes across two or three defenders and makes it so easy for the players outside because they've got the time to take it forward. Carney takes it forward, Shigo commits defenders, and then you're right, it's all about power. Gets the ball down, gets his team back into the game. There's a long way to go. Levels you devils at 18 all. Pat Richards, the man who's fifth on the all-time point scoring list in Super League. Chance to put the Catalan Dragons back in front. He's had, well, this is his third difficult kick of the afternoon. He fell with the first two. That's better, isn't it, Pat? 2018 to the Catalan Dragons and Laurent Fresinu. Well, don't shake your head, Laurent, you're back in front. It's 2018 as this seesaw game tilts back in the Catalans' favour. And they can't just rest on the laurels now, which they did five minutes before the half-time break, and then an error from the kickoff has allowed Wakefield to take the lead again, but uh, full credit to them. And you have to mention our Glenn Stewart. It looked as though he was just going to take the first receiver and go into the defence, and what does he do? He passes a long ball as though he's standoff. Great effort from him. A oh, multi-dimensional player. Well, coming up later this afternoon at 3.15, in point of fact, St. Helens versus the Huddersfield Giants. And then to conclude the Magic Weekend entertainment at the end of this two-day jamboree, it's Hull FC against Hull KR. And Hull FC will be very interested in what's going on here because if Wakefield do win, Hull would have a chance to take the baton as league leaders away from Newcastle. That was close to the sideline, wasn't it? Very close, in fact. They're going for the 40-20 on the third plate. They're backing themselves in. Now, look at that defensive wall. Meeting the, the Wakefield players. Some of the players still struggling to get back behind the ball. Play on is the call. There's a few glances from both sets of players to the referee. Well, he was hunting for the penalty, Jacob Miller, yes. saying he was impeded. Yes, he was. As the sun comes back out here in Newcastle, the showers forecast for well, around about four o'clock this afternoon, but at the moment, not a sign of it. Oh, as Finn is taken down as he got the kick good away kick. and is slow to get back to his feet. That's good work from the Catalan fullback Tony Gijo. That was heading for the sideline and heading for a 40 20. Leon Finn well, got hit very late, and that is some spectacular skill tiptoeing down the touchline and had the presence of mind to bat it back into play. They can come up with some of those tremendous players at time, can't they? Tony Gigo, he is a talent. Can also come up with a few blunders as well, mind you. Well, if you'd have said not long ago that uh, Tony Gigo would be playing full back, but Morgan Escaray was playing so well, remember he was setting Super League alight 12 to 18 months ago, and Escaray has disappeared completely off the radar, and Gijo is the man in possession of the number one shirt. Well, that's what can happen sometimes in sport. Tony Zigo was shown the door a couple of years ago, he went to Toulouse and he had to go away, find himself, 
work really hard, get back into the game and, and really fall back in love with the sport. So he's not taking any chances and he wants to keep all this number one jersey. Well, there's another penalty. Now, I think that's a different one, that. I think that's a different type of tackle. He's a big player, Remy Casti, and they take his legs. His power base is his legs. Well, am, am I wrong there, Stuart? The problem is that, you know, the way the game's going at the minute, as soon as you get your hips above your head, they're looking at a, a penalty. And, you know, that clearly happened there, so you have to control it a bit better than that. And you find that the bigger fellas, the likes of Remy Casti, will run at a smaller player. They'll run at a smaller player. So the smaller players that make the way through rugby league, they've been targeted all their lives. So what they tend to do, their technique is always to hit underneath the bigger men and then take them to ground. Remy Casti certainly shaken up on the field. And he has worked tremendously hard this afternoon. He, he takes a lot of punishment. Takes a lot of... Do you know, I ran into Stuart Fielding last night and Johnny Lawless, a couple of ex-teammates of mine, literally. And we were talking about how the game has changed and evolved and, and a sign of being tough now is being able to absorb okay he's putting him on report i think isn't he stuart yeah yeah he's put the incident on report i think he's uh, had some advice from the video referee so uh, the match review panel will definitely look at that but they'll probably look at the others in the game as well well, now that Chris and Stuart have finished, I'll finish making my point. I, I ran into those two players and they were talking about how the sign of toughness now is Gosh. to get on with your job, no matter what gets thrown at you, and how many times people take your head off and they tip you up and just carry on and focus on your job and your role within the team. And players like Glenn Stewart and Remy Caster, they're doing it really well today. Here is Glenn Stewart, wrestles his way out of the tackle and gets the Catalan Dragons moving once more. Can they get back-to-back -back tries here to put some daylight between themselves and the Wildcats suit? Well, remarkably, come from 14-0 down to lead 18-14. David Taylor, slow to rise to his feet. A loose pass, Baitieri had to really stop and pause to get it away. Oh, great pass out there towards Jody Broughton! Oh, Broughton! Jody Broughton gets his second try of the afternoon. That's the third time he's back to brace in a magic weekend. Some try scorer, some finisher. That took some finishing there from Broughton. And he's got the ball down and he's got his side a six point lead. Well, we watched the Catalan team over the last few years. I mean, Todd Carney, his influence when he throws a ball, the flight of the ball doesn't change. It's absolutely quality. But it all comes about yet again from this tackle from CO. But look at the ball here from Todd Carney, the depth of the pass. They give themselves time because they run so far forward. They run for each other, they push up in support. But the ball from Todd Carney, when he passes that ball, he knows that it's the money ball. He knows he doesn't have to throw the ball over somebody. If he just keeps it the same sort of flight, the same distance from the ground with the perfect power and the weighted pass that it is, they're going to score a try. Well, Pat Richards must be thinking, does every single one of my conversions have to be off a sideline? He had one back in front, which he nailed, but the other four have been of a very high tariff of difficulty. This is to go eight clear. He nailed the fourth kick he had, which was from the uh, near touchline to us. This one even more awkward for a right-footed kicker. He misses that one. So the gap stays at six. 24 18, Catalan Dragons, who've got themselves back in front. Yeah, wonderful uh, quick hands out wide. In fact, Tom Johnson is really in a good position, but he goes a little bit too high. That's a great finish by Broughton. Well, it's been one of the criticisms of the Catalan Dragons this season that many times they've got into good positions and they've just nodded off and allowed their opponents back into the game. Maybe they need the, uh, the bell, Claudio Arenieri's bell, dilly ding, dilly dong. <laughs> because they do do it, don't they? Though, and this time they've had enough time to wake up and get back in front, but you can't keep switching off. <laughs> Penalty blow for offside here. No, I agree, and the, the teams that win silverwork are the teams that put you to the sword. Play for that 80 minutes, they don't have any laxity and concentration. As they did at Hull KR. 
in that kind of when they really put the cleanest through whole KR, didn't they? That was the, the complete performance when they just kept the foot down to the metal all the way through and just kept pummeling whole KR. Well, they're a fabulous side, aren't they? They're absolutely tremendous, led by this man. Yes, Stewart. Well, he's, he's known for his tackling ability, isn't he? But what about his ball skills? Absolutely. Four round game, quite superb. Dave Taylor on the field. They called him back on to add some impetus, and uh, he's given them that. They're back in front. They're six points clear as we move well inside the final quarter of the game now. Let's see what Polissier has up his sleeve here. Bosk, Carney, they move from left to right. Gijo joins the attack. They got Broughton outside looking for a hat trick on that far touch line. Still two tackles left in this sequence for the Catalan Dragons, looking for real breathing space. If they can score again, Remy Casti. Casti takes it in. Arona takes him down. Final tackle then. The ball will be played by Casti. Nine metres out. Todd Carney. A flighted kick into the in goal area and acrobatically taken again by Ben Jones Bishop. And he'll get the quick restart from the 20 metre line. Yeah, well taken from Ben Jones Bishop. And you can see what, what Catalan are doing now in this second half. They're sending in Casti, they're sending in Taylor, Bruschi, which means that Wakefield have to, to pull the defence all around the rook, which means that then on tackle three and four, they're starting to open up the plays. Well, it's been uh, a match where tries have been scored in clumps. Three from the Catalan Dragons in an eight-minute spell, then three for the Wildcats, either side of half-time, and then two quick ones from the Dragons to lead by six at 24 points to 18. Some good hands here as Billy Tupo. Oh, what an upload that is to Johnston. Tom Johnston dances inside one tackle, taken down, but what an upload by Bill Tupo and a penalty there as Johnston was not allowed to get to his feet and Wakefield's enterprise is rewarded. Well, Jacob Miller puts a quality pass into his winger. Here's the penalty and offload. Tom Johnston has no space to move. He knows all he's got to do is get down, plays ball quickly, and he's going to give somebody else a chance. And the referee, he pings Catalan Dragons. Wakefield, for the first time in about 10 minutes, have got some field position. It's been a real seesaw struggle, and is it about to tip back towards the Wakefield Wildcats? Arona. Again, it's Stewart. Again, Stewart's enveloping tackle, suffocating his opponent. Kermond, well, he was always running into heavy traffic there, but they'll set up once more. That's three tackles gone. Oh, screaming for offside here. Dave Taylor was a weak offside there. Well, he's blown it. Let's just try to relax. All right. You know, and that's what he spots, isn't it? Yeah, it was, again... Dave Taylor flies the line. Yeah, but he good referee in there, because he's just waiting to see if something occurred Yeah, of course, because yeah. they could have scored a try from that. Yeah, why blow early? It doesn't need to blow early. Another set here, then, for Wakeford. Back-to-back penalties, and on the line, camped out there, looking for a try that could level the match if it was converted. Finn just... Flicked off the pass to big Nick Struton. Here's Liam Finn once more, the former cast. Oh, Finn! The former cast tiger almost went through a gap and the door slammed very quickly in the halfback's face. Now Miller. Miller, again he's enveloped. Again it's Glenn Stewart. But this time Stewart is left in back play and they can get a decent play of the ball. Two tackles left and it's knocked on. It's knocked on by Matty Ashurst. Yeah, when he goes in. Dear, oh dear, that, that really is a, a killer, isn't it? It oh. really has sucked the life out of that attack just when they were setting up for a possible equalising score. But Even if they hadn't scored, Terry Chaps of a repeat set. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when, he picks, Carney, fans... though, when he picks up Todd picks up Todd Carney, was the hands in from and That's Todd what the Carney. Wakefield fans are saying. They're right in front of that. Now, have a look, he gets underneath him. Look, he's got his right arm. He strips the ball, whether Ashurst leaves go of it or not. Stuart, well, what's your view? Difficult to see, there's a lot of hands on there, whether the hands actually knock the ball out is difficult to say. Call came from the touch judge on the far side, Joe Cobb, who uh, refereed last night as well, so he's back on duty today. It was a questionable decision to go out from dummy half, Matty Ashurst anyway, but once he did that, to lose the ball, surrender possession and put them under pressure, they've got to deal with it now. Doesn't Jacob Miller look a different player at Wakefield than when he was at Hull FC? Yeah, I mean... You know, he's very, very disappointing to spell at Hull FC, wasn't it? I'm sure he'd admit that himself, but he's had a new lease of life, hasn't he? Yeah. No doubt. 
about it. He's uh, played every game this season. He tops their list for a try assist with a dozen. It's been a great season for for Miller. Bosk. Good pressure. Oh, Kerman really almost great got pressure. him with the ball in hand and almost managed to uh, take him down before he got the kick away. In the end, it was a pressurised hack forward, which made little ground. This is brilliant work, straight from Marker, getting out. Thomas Bosk, well, he couldn't even get a decent pass away because of what Kerman was doing. Straight in his eye line. Yeah, certainly was. Well, ben Jones Bishop, who's couple of tries in a losing cause at the moment takes his team up to the halfway line Ashurst in a dummy half to Finn who really is seeing a lot of the ball in the second half it was a, a line ball from Nick Scruton and called play on by the referee Scruton gets involved again he was looking to support Miller but in the end it went from right to left that's knocked on by Catalan off Glenn Stewart is the tackle count going to be wiped clean no last one then Wakefield fans thought it should have been it wasn't Miller aerial bombardment of Richards Richards loses out in that aerial duel with Ben Jones Bishop and it will be well, Wakefield claiming it's third it ball it will be come on oh, well we're going to have a chat about it now and I dare say that the video referee might be having a word in his shell like well Wakefield ball here we go he's going to ask the video referee just to check they've got a, that, that's their call on the field who's he come off last it probably does come off Pat Richards, doesn't it? Yeah, good call from the touch judge and the and the referee. You can see that Pat Richards, he thinks that he's got that ball. And ben Jones Bishop. Whenever they put the ball in the air, they made it a contest. They've come up with with some decent results, haven't they? They've scored yeah. a try. They get the head and feed here, ten meters from from Catalan's line. I'll tell you what, Ben Jones Bishop here is up against one of the ace aerial kick fielders in in the league along with Joel Monaghan isn't he and so he's getting a lot of change out of Richards well that looks like part of the game plan that looks like during the week they've prepared for that duel all week because when Miller had the ball in his hand there was an acre of space probably around the sticks for him to look at maybe put it on the floor and create a contest but they're getting great reward from that aerial battle well Miller going to ground appeared to be caught high but the referee Happy to wave play on, probably because he slipped. But that might be one to look at anyway. It doesn't matter, play is continuing, and Wakefield looking to get the levelling score. Six behind, 11 and a half minutes to go, but right on the line. Miller, oh, dearie me. Dearie me, Mikael Simon, he'll want that, he'd like to have that one back, wouldn't he? It was a weary play as well, because you saw, I think there was three or four Wakefield players, I think Nick Scruton had his hands on his knees, he wasn't going to be expecting this ball. Jacob Miller, well, who's putting your hands up, lads? Who's going to take the ball in? Who's going to run off, mate? You can see them all clumped together. Well, that looked like a get-me-to-50 player. That yeah. looks like the, the half-back wanted a central position so they could split the two pivots, Finn and Miller, and maybe decide on the hoof what was available to them. But the big fellas, they look a bit tired, a bit gassed, just about to enter into the last 10 minutes of this game. Yeah, it's another warm afternoon in Newcastle. And... In all the matches, really, we've seen very, very fit athletes start to tire. The pitch, a lot of grass on it. Maybe it is a sapping quality, the pitch. It, you know, these are the fittest athletes in the country, and yet they all seem to be just running out of gas towards the end. Maybe it's the occasion. It is the occasion as well. Playing on the big occasion does that to you. Yeah. And the pitch, I say we were down there before the game, absolutely perfect. Yes, it is. Great condition here at St James's. As, uh, Carney over the head of Ben Joe's Bishop. He stretches out one of those long levers and bats it back to Max Jowett. Jowett starts moving away. Well, he's will be a penalty here. Flailing arm from Anderson. Concedes a penalty and end up conceding another 20 metres. A lazy arm. Well, Ben Jones Bishop had somewhere to say to Louis Anderson. You can see just the reaching arm goes straight over the top. He's got good footwork, hasn't he, Jowett? That's what he does to players. I was just going to say that. He's not an awful defender, doing his best impression of Leonidas. But the thing is, you, you can see the Catalan side, they, they've still got that lead. It was a wonderful kick downfield. Chase was good. What do they do? Silly play. High shot, give away 30, 40 metres downfield. I know he stepped you, but you caught him. You caught him after the penalty. All right. There you go. Well, it was an honest play, wasn't yeah. it, from him? Yeah, well, he stepped me. Yeah. 
Leonidas, being honest, when you're ready, mate. getting back in the defensive line, but that's what then broken field kick return players can do to a big, tiring defender. I'll tell you what, that's a great kick as well. That really has bitten off plenty. He could have been conservative there and just knocked it into touch somewhere on the halfway line, but it, it went for the jackpot and came up with it. That gives them plenty of distance on the kick and gets them setting up base camp 20 metres out. Liam Finn, great kick. What can they do this time? The last uh, two or three attacks have really fizzled out through handling errors. This is Anakin. He wants a penalty. They're not getting one. They're getting Liam Finn instead. Finn just drops it off. Oh, oh, oh offload from Tupo, picked up by Finn once more. Half a chance for Scruton. And Scruton is wrestled to the ground. Back to one here, Rod. Come on, the captain! He's put back into reverse. That was a great tackle by Anderson. He first stopped Curve on and then put him backwards. Now Jacob Miller. Miller. Just a little simple ball as they set up near the line once more. Ashurst is in at Dummy Harb. Anakin plays the ball. Dropped off once more and a chance of a try. A try for Simon. Mikael Simon has got the try. The pressure pays off for Wakefield and now they're just a goal kick away from levelling the match up at 24 each. Well, how much will that mean to that player? Mikel Simon, former Catalan Dragons player, of course. He's run, very, he's run very strongly all day, all afternoon. And he gets his chance that close to the sideline because of the footwork, bravery and courage of Max Jowett, who wrong foots a flailing arm from Louis Anderson. And with the momentum going their way in this game, the quick play of the balls, Here's the offload. Look at Liam Finn. He's first to pick that ball up straight on the attack. Hard and straight with two and three defenders in attendance. The Frenchman gets the ball down. This is just brilliant play. Look at that. What does he do? He sees who's the smaller defender. And you have to do that when you're running onto the ball so close to the line. Can Liam Finn slot this over here? All squirt. Yes. It is all square at 24 apiece. It's five tries to four to the Catalan Dragons, but the misconversions, difficult though they were from Pat Richards, are the difference between the teams. All of them from the sideline. It's difficult to be too critical, but I'm sure he would think he probably should have got at least one of them just on the law of averages. But he couldn't find the mark with those two in the first half and that other one as well. Though difficult kicks from the right-hand sideline have proved too much for Pat Richards. Well, it just shows you the silly play by the second rower, Louis Anderson. Stuck out the left arm, gave away the penalty. The result, Wakefield in a good position. And well done, that man, Mikel Simon. He's here again, Steve Up. He runs so hard, he's been dominated a couple of times in this game, but he picks out Thomas Boss, the halfback who's defending with his feet planted. There's only ever going to be one winner with someone as big as Simon taking on the smaller man so close to the line. I can recall when they announced that they were going to sign Michael Simon, and he played against Wakefield, and he had a tremendous game. And then likewise, when he's got the gusto up, when he's fully motivated, he runs as hard as anybody. 24 all last year, finished 22 all. Catalan Dragons and Huddersfield. Last tackle here. That might be a penalty. No, it isn't. It could have been though, really. Yeah. Agree, yeah. Liam Finn going for the one pointer. Well, he didn't really connect anything like he would have liked to. He never really got hold of that. He got the distance, but not the accuracy. No, he never really struck it as he wanted to at all. But, well, it would have put them one in front with six to go. As it is, it means Catalan start 20 metres from their try line. They could have done. You, that's Steve yeah, they could have done with another drive to give him in a better position. Full credit to. Oh, that looked slightly forward. That was a lazy pass from the dummy half. You just get the impression that if uh, the Catalan side get anywhere near, they'll go for the one. Thomas Boss, perhaps, or Todd Carney. Well, Pat Richards, they got a few, haven't they? And that's an op that's a, a really great option to have when you've got two or three field goal experts because the defending team isn't going to be ever sure who's going to have the shot down the middle they go to within 
30 meters of the arm. Oh, oh, two forget the one pointer. There'll be two coming. Oh, no, oh, that really, Seymour well. has gone from the man who was the hero to the man who could possibly have cost his team. He was involved in that tackle. Well, yeah. from hero to zero, you can see the captain, Nick Scruton. He's over the top. Yeah, I mean, Everybody I mean, knows in a Wakefield shirt. I mean, I mean, I mean. We need half a chance. We need to be up the other end of the pitch. What we don't need to do is throw the dice and hope Maybe for the best. And that's what Mikel Simon has done. It's OK clamping the ball, and you see players, the first contact when they're defending, they do normally hit high, wrap up the ball, but when you're going backwards and you've got hold of the ball, you can't strip it straight in front of the referee. You'd almost, in that position, you'd want the player to keep hold of it so there's no danger of being penalised. You'd actually help him to keep hold of it. Mikel Simon, he's had a strip, hoping that nobody else would see it, and uh, he's lost that bet. Well, Cat, Pat Richards put his side in front. This is what he does for a living. And you put an awful lot of money, even money, he could knock this over from that distance. Oh, and you'd have, you'd have done your money because he's hit the post. Pat Richards is having a real off day with the boot. That's four misses, and that one really the most costly from bang in front. That should have been meat and tatey. Well, Rod, you have absolutely lost everything there. Well, you backed him to get this, Look and at all that. of a I mean, sudden, I always thought it was going to go out. Did you? Well, he hooked it, and it was always dragging it towards the near post as far as he was looking at it. For a moment, he might have hoped against hope it would catch the inside of the post and go over, but it just cannoned out to safety. And then full credit to Wakefield, because at that point, you could just switch off and yeah. lose possession. They were quick onto the loose ball. Here's their Jacob last Miller. tackle. Not from there, surely. He's had a goal. That's a monstrous effort from Miller. What He's a had strike. a goal. What a strike that is from Miller. That is a drop goal from the halfway line and beyond. It's an absolute whopper. And it puts his side one in front. Well, everybody was looking at Liam Finn, who was going to go on the right side to put it down into the pocket. But Jacob Miller, all five foot three of him, puts every ounce and pound of the weight he has behind that kick. Outstanding work. And to get that away under the pressure that he was under is incredible. Absolutely astonishing strike. And there's the one that cannoned off the upright from Pat Richards. Miller's second drop goal of his career in his first in Super League as Richards' uh, kickoff is collected. Well, one of the monstrous drop goals. Do you remember Pat Richards struck one uh, against for, Leeds for, uh, for, for Wigan. Wigan? I think it might have been against, at St Helens at Langtree Park from wide out on the sideline. Well, this has got to be now, and I'm sure Chris Chester will get the message out. This has got to be just the five drives, kick and kick over the whitewash, and that should just about wrap it up. But what a one-pointer. That's put a smile on my face, well, and I'll tell you incredible. what, there's a few Wakefield fans that are grinning also. You just play the sets out here, Rod. Well, talk about against the odds. First, Richards missing a nailed on two points, and then, well, Jacob Miller, what? One in ten chance at best from that range? And he struck it so well. I mean, the distance wasn't even an issue. Magnificent field goal from Miller, which looks to have won the game from Wakefield. It will keep the Catalans off the top of the table. It will mean that Wakefield win again for the eighth time in nine. And it will mean that they move up to sixth again above the Castleford Tigers. And Miller will just dribble that right towards the sideline oh, and say, gotta... former scrum there, mate. It's got to go only got 90 seconds to go the length of the field from 10 metres from your own sideline. Lovely stuff from Jacob Miller, lovely stuff. He's had a difficult afternoon, as I said. He's had lots of players running at him, trying to take some juice out of his tank. When it's been time to make those big decisions, he's made more right ones than wrong ones. And look at those fans having a, a wonderful afternoon. Well, will we see a rarity? Will we see a kick right from the base of the scrum and a chase? No. Absolutely astonishing from 14-0 behind. Never mind anything else. 
And then the drop goal from Miller just a couple of minutes from the end after Richards had missed the penalty off the post. Is there any late twist here? Is there something remarkable from the Catalan Dragons? Can that? Well, no, there is no. not because they spill the ball. Tom Johnston picks it up, and Johnston is dancing away from challenges, coming across the 30-meter uh, line. All he's got to do is hold on to the ball here. There's only a minute left. All they've got to do is run through a set of six, and keep hold of the ball, and Wakefield will have produced, even by their standards, one of the most remarkable wins in this recent run over Christchester's management. Is this a better win? They don't any expansive players there here, do they? No, there'll be nothing here. They'll just trundle forward. They'll keep hold of the football. They've got three, four more tackles in this sequence, in fact. They don't even need to conjure anything up. Liam Finn takes it in. 30 seconds left for Wakefield here to run through the simplest of processes to keep hold of the ball and win a remarkable win at the Magic Weekend. Only their third win at the Magic Weekend in ten attempts and one over the would-be league leaders of Super League. Last one then, they'll just belt this into the stand, anywhere will do so well, take the tackle then, oh, I thought they'd scored again, they'll take the tackle, that won't matter, that's enough, Wakefield Trinity Wildcats have produced one of the great fight backs, one of the great wins at the Magic Weekend, the whistle has gone, Wakefield have beaten the Catalan Dragons, an amazing victory from 14-0 down, they were 14-0 down after 26 minutes, and the fight back via two tries from Ben Jones.